Hello everyone. So welcome to my course on Laplace transforms. So today we are going to see what do you mean by a convolution product. Now why this comes into picture because we have seen earlier that Laplace is linear in nature. Now what do you mean by linear? Laplace of addition is addition of Laplaces. Okay, so if you have two function, then Laplace satisfies this nice property with respect to addition as well as with respect to scalar multiplication. Where alpha is what alpha is a scalar. Then your Laplace satisfies these two nice properties. But then the question arises: How does Laplace behaves with the product? That means, what about Laplace of product? Is Laplace of product is equal to product of Laplaces? That is the obvious next question one can ask. Well, the answer is this is not true in general. And if I want to give a simple counter example, you take f equal to one and g equal to one. So what is one into one? It is one only. So what is Laplace of one? One by s. What is Laplace of one? One by s. What is Laplace of one? One by s. So here you have one upon s square. Here you have one upon s. So if you take f and g to be one, we can see that this is not equal. So Laplace of product is not equal to, or need not be equal to the product of Laplaces. So obviously one can ask which instead of this multiplication, which operation should you perform between the two functions so that you have the product of Laplaces. I'm saying I'm repeating once again. So the question arises: What operation you should do over here so that we have Laplace of this? F operation G is equal to the product of Laplaces, and that's where the convolution comes into picture. So answer is if you take F convolution G, this is called as convolution product. So if you take F convolution G, then that is actually equal to the product of Laplaces. So now let's see what do you mean by convolution, and then we will see some examples. Okay, so this is how we define the convolution product. F convolution G is defined as integration of product f of tau into g of t minus tau d tau. So this is how you define the convolution. This is a convolution product. This is not the normal product. So for example, if I want to say is my f convolution one equal to f? Answer is no. F into one is f, right? The normal product. But here f convolution one is not f. If I want to give you a very simple example, if I take f of t equal to t, what is my t convolution one? This is nothing but integral zero to t. What I have, I have tau into my what is g? G is one. So g of t minus tau will also be one. So this is one into d tau, and what I get t square by two as an answer. So t convolution one is t square by two. This is not t. So that's the difference. Okay, so convolution product is different than the normal product of functions so this is one point to observe but then convolution is not that bad that bad as in even though this thing is not equal but if i do one convolution f then f convolution 1 is equal to one convolution f and in general f convolution g is equal to g convolution f that means convolution product is commutative in nature okay that means they can commute so the answer is same so this is equal but in general this is not this is not true okay so i hope this part is clear okay though you can check what about f convolution 0 f convolution 0 will come out to be 0 because here it, it you will have 0 so ultimately it is 0 okay so this is one thing and now comes the very important theorem in laplace transform that means that is laplace of f convolution g is nothing but the product of laplaces or when i take the inverse f convolution g of t is nothing but laplace inverse of laplace of f into laplace of g this is the notation which we use so these are the two things which which one should understand now let's take some examples on laplace and laplace inverse so two examples we already saw first and the second now let's go for the third example now suppose i want to find the one convolution sin t i want to find this convolution so what do you do you so using the formula what do you have so this is nothing but f of tau but f is 1 so f of tau is 1 into g of t minus tau so wherever you have t you replace t by t minus tau now we want to integrate this you integrate there are plenty of ways either you can expand sin of a minus b as sin a cos b minus cos a sin b and you can do whichever technique you want but what i want to tell over here is as i told you that convolution product is commutative in nature therefore this finding this is same as to find sin t convolution 1 and now what is this f of tau so what is my f of t sin t so what is f of tau sin tau into g of t minus tau now what is g of t so what is g of t minus tau it will again be a 1 because it's a constant function now here you have only sin tau 
and what is integration of this minus of cos tau and now if you integrate from 0 to t what answer you get you get 1 minus cos t so this convolution is nothing but 1 minus cos t so this is a very important property well this was very simple many times we will have many complex things over here so that time using this property will really reduces your job okay so make sure you choose your g to be a very simple function because here you are doing translation kind of thing g of t minus tau okay so therefore choose your g to be as simple as possible okay and whatever the complex thing is have you you to, you take that as your f so that's one important point one has to take care one has to take from this example okay now let's go for another example now let's go for the inverses and my aim is to find laplace inverse of 1 upon s into s minus 1 now if you recall my previous lecture what i told you whenever you see product in the denominator the first thing you do is you go by partial fraction method that is one way you can solve this another one if you recall there is 1 upon s over here and whenever you have 1 upon s again if you recall my previous lecture what was Laplace of integration? It was 1 upon s f of s. So Laplace inverse of 1 upon s into f of s is nothing but the integration. So here you have 1 upon s. So you can also do this by Laplace of integration technique. But okay, let me do this by convolution as well. So whenever you have a product in the denominator, partial fraction will definitely help you. Many times this become very complex. So we go for convolution. And moreover, if you have only 1 upon s or 1 upon s square, then you can think of using integration as well. Okay, but now let's do this by convolution. So what does the convolution says? Laplace inverse of f of s into g of s is f convolution g. Now here, what is your f of s? Your f of s if you compare, it is nothing but 1 upon s and your g of s is 1 upon s minus 1. So from here, what will be your f of t? It will be 1, right? Because Laplace of 1 is 1 upon s and what will be your g of t? It will be nothing but e raised to t because Laplace of e raised to a t is 1 upon s minus a. Here your a is 1. So great, here this is nothing but Laplace inverse of fs into gs and therefore this Laplace inverse is nothing but one convolution e of t. Okay, now to find Laplace inverse of this is nothing but we have to do this convolution product. So this is nothing but integration 0 to t and you can do this integration. But now as I told you, you always choose your g to be the simplest function because there is a translation in g. So what you do is instead of finding this, you find this quantity and now what is this convolution integration 0 to t f of tau so this will be e raised to tau into g of t minus tau but g is 1 so it's a constant function 1 this is d tau so this is nothing but e raised to t minus 1 so therefore laplace inverse of this is nothing but e raised to t minus 1 you should get the same answer if you go by first or the second method as well but convolution is a third method. So whenever you see a product in the denominator, you always prefer partial fraction or convolution. And if there is only S, you can think of using the Laplace of integration technique as well. Let me take one more example. Now suppose you want to find Laplace inverse of 5 upon S square plus 1 into S square plus 25. Now here you can't use that Laplace of integration technique because you don't have 1 upon S. Okay, so two methods, either partial fraction or convolution product. If you go by partial fraction, what this will be? This is nothing but as plus b upon s square plus 1 plus cs plus d upon s square plus 25. You will need to find four coefficients a, b, c and d. That means you will, then you will try to simplify. You will get a system of linear equations. So you will get four linear equations in four unknowns. Then you write in the matrix form, you do the calculation. It will be a very big process. One can avoid that using convolution. Now here what do you do is this, this is nothing but what is your f of s? you take is as 1 upon s square plus 1 since here you have 25 so i will take 5 with this so my g of s is nothing but 5 upon s square plus 25 so this is nothing but laplace inverse of f of s into g of s and therefore by convolution theorem this is nothing but f convolution g now what is my f this is nothing but sine t into what is this this is nothing but sine of so by Laplace theorem, what is Laplace inverse of this? It is nothing but the convolution of f of t and g of t. Now what is f of t? It is such that its Laplace should be 1 upon s square plus 1. And what will be g of t? It should be such that its Laplace will be 5 upon s square plus 25. So this is nothing but sine t convolution. This is nothing but sine of phi t. So now this is a very easy thing to do, right? Again, I, I will say that you take this over here. This is nothing but sin phi t convolution sin t and what is this this is nothing but integration 0 to t what is this f of tau means sin of phi tau into sin of 
t minus tau d tau okay now further it is simple i am not going to solve you know what is the formula for sin a into sin b apply that formula you will get cos into the picture you know what is integration of cos it is nothing but sin you get the answer so the main thing was how to split this so this is how you will split and you will have this convolution and you can see this becomes a very small problem if you go by partial fraction this will become very big okay so whenever you have two quadratic in the denominator my suggestion is and if you can find what is f of s and g of s then my suggestion is you always go with the convolution product okay so i hope all the examples are clear now let me give you a couple of homework problems for your practice so here are the four examples laplace of t convolution t well the answer will be nothing but laplace of t into laplace of t okay because La laplace of convolution is product of laplace so this is nothing but 1 upon s square well okay i told you the answer for this try for this and find the laplace inverse of this two thing by convolution you can do by partial fraction as well but my suggestion is you go by convolution for your practice so i hope the concept is clear if yes do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you